Thursday was the day we expected to get some updates on Joe Burrow. The Bengals returned to practice. Burrow met with the media. Let's try to parse it all and make sense of what's going on with that calf. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine. The Bengals playing Monday Night Football, so we don't have a game preview today. We'll get that to you on Sunday, so you have time to listen to it before the game after we've had a couple more practices for the Bengals in the books. We're going to talk about Joe Burrow's calf today, however, on this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can subscribe to the show on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. Make it easy to become part of that first listen club, the everydayers out there. We appreciate all of you who make us part of your life in either of those ways, preferably both of them. Of course, this episode brought to you by the game time app where you can create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase of last minute tickets for the lowest price guaranteed. Well, James, a story today, obviously Joe Burrow's calf officially listed as a non-participant in practice. He did go to practice, had his helmet on crossing the street while he was walking by the gaggle of media waiting to capture him on video, walking into practice, promptly took his helmet off as soon as he got out of the close proximity to media recording him coming into practice. I found that little tidbit a little bit uh, humorous myself in, in a generally pretty serious situation for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was listed as a non-participant despite being out there. Mm-hmm. And James, I'll let you describe what you saw because you were there to see it in person. Well, I saw him put his helmet on and I think he realized how many reporters were waiting long before he crossed the street. And, and he probably saw NFL network was the first one posted up like in front of the practice fields. And so when he saw that, I'm sure he was like, okay, helmet on. Let's see what we got. So I, I, I don't blame him. I get it. And look, this is what's lingering over everything. You know, you can't talk. We're not going to do a show and not talk about this. And what I saw from him today was stretching some. He certainly came out uh, to practice and, and was um, joking with Ted Karras and doing his normal there. But – I think it's pretty clear that he's he's dealing with the the cap. You can see it. I know there are a lot of experts on social media with his walk. I think his walk looked fine. I don't think there was really anything there. I, I think when you have a, a sleeve like that and we're thinking about it, it's much different now. When he, he threw, and he did throw, just to be very clear, because I know there are some saying, oh, he didn't throw. He threw. It was just during the part of practice, the very beginning part of practice, where – quarterbacks work with their centers and he was working with Ted Karras. It wasn't Jake Browning. It, it wasn't, uh, it, you know, um, what's the uh, Will Greer it slipped my mind. I need to get Will Greer's name down right now, Jake, you're rubbing off on me. Yeah. It's but, a bad influence right there. My bad. But stretching wise, he didn't do everything, which makes sense. I mean, they're doing high knees and like different things like that, where it's like, okay, well don't do that today, Joe, regardless, there's just no reason. And, and then during the individual throwing period, it, he didn't t- partake. So it was Will Greer. Obviously, it was Jake Browning leading the show. And that's when, just to give our listeners an idea, and I've posted video of this throughout camp over the years, th- that's when you throw to equipment managers and you're throwing to different coaches. And we, so when you see the quarterbacks doing that, that's what I'm talking about. He didn't uh, participate in that. So after that part, media is kicked out. So I'm sure he was out there just to get the mental reps. And, and what I do think is important is he limited on Thursday? Is he limited – or Friday, excuse me. Is he limited on Saturday? He he said he didn't necessarily need a full practice to play on Monday, and it was more about how he was feeling. So I don't think he practices his priority from a physical standpoint, and so that's certainly something to watch moving forward. Being out there for the mental reps, of course, makes sense. He said in his own presser, and we'll scrutinize, I think, both press conferences a, a little bit, There's some humor to be found in both of those as well. I like to find 
those those funny moments and otherwise challenging situations and, and of course we're talking about football we're talking about a game here but we're, we're talking about a football team that had extremely high expectations this year can you practice at all is a big question that that would tell you something about if he's actually on track to play and and we'll talk about what we think and how we're reading the situation as well i'm curious to get your thoughts there james i have my own thoughts that i'm happy to share but in his own presser, he said he's preparing as if he's going to play Monday Night Football. And the, the, the way this week has gone to this point and getting the DNP on the practice report today, on the official practice report today, kind of reinforces a couple of things in a couple of directions. At the same time, Zach Taylor describing it as a day-to-day -day thing describing I don't think he'll go full today if he's out there at all when he's talking about Joe Burrow's participation in practice on Thursday and he did go out there and didn't participate it, it does seem like there's a lot still in the air here but here's my read James and and you tell me if, if you disagree with something here and give me your your perspective as well my read is that Joe Burrow wants to do everything he possibly can to to try to play in this game if it's physically reasonable for him to play in this game, I think he wants to do that. I think that there are, on the other side, big concerns about re-injury, worse injury, what's the pros and cons of getting him rest, what level of Joe Burrow do you get if he is limited on that calf, and you know if it's 50% Burrow versus 80% Burrow, what level would be enough for him to give you the best chance to win but I think mostly it's about long-term health versus Joe Burr doing everything he can to get out there while the team also knows they're 0-2 and understands the situation they're in and wants to give him every chance to be healthy. Yeah, I think for the most part, you're, you're pretty spot on. Uh, let's start here. Roll out IR. I don't think that that is a conversation. Yes. I don't think that's a discussion. Uh, I think he would probably pick up the chair I'm in and and th throw it across the field if they tried to tell him to, to put him on IR. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't think that's part of it. It's a matter of when he can get back out there. And a couple of things, the preparing to play for Monday night. Yeah, that was my question because he, th just the way he was talking, I was like, all right, so mindset wise, are you playing on Monday? Like, which I get. I, I think he went into this week, whether it was talking to the media, uh, everything from a game plan standpoint. I think he's treating it like a normal week and hoping to make that work. And we'll see, you know, if he can physically, but I think mentally you look at Carolina and our good friend, Andy Dalton, he was the one who talked to the media on Thursday, not, not Bryce young. And that's interesting. Bryce young was a DNP back to back days. Burrow talked today. Like I think mentally he's trying to do his normal routine. And then physically he's going to see if the calf can, can hold up. Today, him being out there, I think that was about mental reps as, as much as anything. There, there's value there. You know, they could have, you know, I, I've seen some like, oh, well, why isn't he riding a golf cart or doing this? He probably wants to walk, and he's probably cleared to walk where it's like, yeah, it's not going to hurt you. You're out there for an hour and a half. It's not four hours. So uh, I think that that's sort of the mindset. Now, I agree with you. I, I think that they're going to play it as – Worn tight to the vest, but they're going to be cautious because of how valuable he is. But I don't think that this is going to be a five to six week thing unless something unforeseen happens. I've seen a lot of that, right? IR, just shelve him to until the buy, all of that. I, I can com confidently say that I don't believe that that's even a discussion right now. And so if he doesn't play on Monday night, it's going to be a week from now. All right, is he going to play in, in Nashville? And, and if it's not that, then it's going to be, all right, can he play? in Arizona. And, and that's how they're going to do it. So this could be solved as early as Monday if he's able to suit up. And I think he's going to try. But if not, I think he's going to try to play each and every week. This isn't going to be some long-term thing like some have said. Yeah, Burrow said in his press conference straight up, it hasn't been a conversation about it being putting me on the shelf for something long-term. They're taking it. Zach and Burrow, very consistent on this day-to-day -day, i think in a big way coming up next i think there's more to talk about with this joe burrow decision not a whole lot more to talk about but certainly more to talk about as it dictates so much about what the bengals are going to do against the los angeles Rams when they come to town for monday's game we'll continue the conversation coming up next 
Today's episode of Locked On Bengals is brought to you by Game Time. And buying tickets to your favorite event, even if it's Monday Night Football, shouldn't be a stressful thing. Game Time makes it fast and easy to buy tickets for maybe it's not the Bengals. Maybe you want to go to a show, comedy show, music show, whatever it is. It's all easy with the Game Time app. There are flash deals and last minute tickets and a lowest price guarantee. That means if you find tickets in the same section, same row for a cheaper price, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress with the Game Time app. Right now, our listeners can get $20 off your first purchase of tickets. So it's easy. You're going to get last minute tickets. You can get $20 off with promo code locked on NFL in the Game Time app. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off in the game time app download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed today's show is also brought to you by doordash yes doordash delivers groceries you've trusted doordash to deliver your restaurant favorites i know i've used doordash for years and now if you need fresh groceries you don't have to go to the store try grocery delivery from doordash you'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. This is a huge time saver for someone like me. Maybe you're juggling kids. You're also dealing with busy, busy time, a football season. Well, thousands of grocery stores uh, you can choose from with DoorDash. You can find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. And if you want even more value, you can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a zero delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. And You can get 50% off your first DoorDash order today up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONNFL at checkout. Limited time only, terms do apply, but it's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONNFL. Don't forget, that's code LOCKEDONNFL for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. So... The Joe Burrow conversation continues with a couple of other angles to discuss. One is, what's our feeling today, Thursday, after practice, one practice into the week, a couple of days left. Things can obviously change between now and Sunday, now and Monday, uh, when we record our next show on Sunday in, in preparation for Monday Night Football. What's the feel right now as to whether or not Joe Burrow is going to play? Two, I think, is just a quick note on the backup quarterback competition. I think some people are very curious about Will Greer. It doesn't sound like he's quite ready to go and challenge Jake Browning for that backup role yet. We can get into that as well. And then talking about what the offense might look like regardless of whether or not Burrow plays, because if he does play, it's safe to assume he won't be at 100%. But let's start with, based on everything we know right now, what's your general feeling as to whether or not Joe Burrow is going to play today on Monday? I still lean no, and I've kind of been that way all week. I will say, I think he's going to push. I think he's really going to push to to make it happen. And part of my takeaway from his news conference was the fact that, and there's outside noise, sorry about that for those listening. Um, That's what happens when you're at the stadium recording. But part of my takeaway was the fact that he said it very clear and aware of them being 0-2. And that's when I followed it up with asking how tough it is. Because a year ago, he hit me with the – and not just me, everybody, but I don't, I can't remember if it was my question or not, but everybody relax. We're going to be fine. And then they went and beat the jets and four days later they beat the dolphins. And you can have that mindset when you're not dealing with this 100 pound issue on your shoulders that happens to be a, a strained calf. And that's, that's what it is. I mean, it's in the back of his mind or probably front and center right now, uh, but back of his mind, even when he's feeling good, even when he has a, a good day of film session or whatever it is, He's going to be thinking like, all right, well, can I go? And so I think he really pushes and pushes the envelope. This may go down to the wire. I think we see him limited at some point. And if you're the Bengals, the, the, the only tell will be when they have to make a decision. And they can wait till Monday, but make a decision on Will Greer. He's on the practice squad. And so you elevate him. And maybe you do anyways, but, you wouldn't, you, do. Want, yeah. but you wouldn't want three – three quarter because that third quarterback rule does not work with a practice squad quarterback so you, you honestly that, might have to do it of, anyway unless you want to go emergency quarterback tyler boyd if burrow tries and then browning has to play and then something happens you, you might sure. have to i don't know and, and and maybe maybe they find a way to get greer to the roster 
and and do it that way because then he can be the emergency third quarterback mm-hmm. and 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 you can essentially have an extra active spot on Monday night. So I think that part's interesting. I think Joe's really going to push. And yeah. he might be the only one, and I know he's still in the building right now as I record. He might be the only one in the building that thinks he's going to play. Like T. Higgins was asked, and he was like, well, yeah, if he's 100%. All right, well, there is a 0.0% chance that Joe is 100%, and he probably won't be for a while. And I think he's going to play at less than 100%. And guess what? That's part of football. T's done it too. You know, these guys have done it. It's just a matter of when can he get to the the necessary percent to go back out there. It might be Monday. It might not. If I had to guess, I would say it won't be Monday. Uh, but it would not shock me because it's it's Joe Burrow. And I, I think Jamar Chase calls him stubborn, but there's a reason he is where he is. Part of that stubbornness is a a good thing. And and toughness. Not just well, stubbornness, sure. but toughness. Well, sure. We've seen this guy time <laughs> sure. and time again show incredible toughness, sometimes to his detriment. And, and that's part of the concern is what is the re-injury or further injury risk? They're not going to let him go out there if they're concerned about, okay, maybe something catastrophic happens where now you're rehabbing for a year again. You know, you don't want to set him up to to have a further injury. I think that is something that needs to be considered as well and something that from the outside we just don't have information about. We, we don't know the specifics about this injury other than he's walking and his mobility is limited. You said he thought he looked fine walking. I thought he looked stiff. I, I thought that he was favoring the leg. I'm not watching in person. So different different vantage points. And from some angles, I thought he looked fine. And from other angles, it looked like it was a little bit stiff. So I, I think I agree with you, though. Going into, the, to, going into today, before the press conferences, before he walked out there for practice, didn't end up being a, a real participant in practice, I would have said he's not playing. My feeling all week has been that he wasn't going to play on Monday, that it was a severe enough injury that it wasn't going to happen or re-injury that it wasn't going to happen. But the the caveat there was always, well, it's Joe Burrow. Like the, the guy's going to do everything in his power to try to get onto the field. And, and that's reinforced today. And so if he feels like he can go, that's the path for him to go. And, and like he said, probably six times, seven times in his press conference, We'll we'll see. We'll see what the next few days hold. Yeah. I I think that Jake Lisko analyzed Joe Burrow's walk for the first time six weeks ago. Right. Like that's that's what everybody does. And that that's the part. That's my point, by the way. And I'm not just saying you. It's everybody. Everyone looks at it now. Maybe he always walks that way. Like I, you know, like that that's the part that I think is is interesting. Anyways, even if he is a little stiff, I don't think he plays because which one do you think is more likely to, to win without Burrow? Road Tennessee or home Rams? Uh, I'll answer. Home Rams is more you likely. You could probably run on the Rams. I, I feel better about taking advantage of the Rams defense without Burrow than I do about Tennessee because Tennessee's defense is always, historically, no matter who's on that team, the last, what, three years the Bengals have played in Tennessee or whatever it is, it's been a well-coached defense every time. Yep, I, I think it's I think it's tough. I think that's that's the the realm you go and and you go from there. And and so we'll see. But this is a huge game, a huge game. You fought zero and three, and it's. I know there's a lot of numbers about zero and two, and the Bengals being the exception. It's really hard to be an exception at zero and three. So let's uh, let's continue. Let's talk about Will Greer and uh, Jake Browning and and the idea that. Greer might not be pushing in that backup quarterback competition, so to speak, that so many, I think, we're hoping to see. So we can do that and much, much more coming up next. This episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. And testing your fantasy decision making skills on Prize Picks is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps and i mean just a few taps you can get your entry in after you make your picks in less than 60 seconds with quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types prize picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app 
this week, maybe you like Patrick Mahomes to have more than two passing touchdowns. Maybe you like the Bengals to limit Matt Stafford and Puka Nakua to less than two touchdown passes or less than seven catches. Puka Nakua breaking records for the Los Angeles Rams. Prize Picks has weekly promotions as well that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday where you get a 25% discount to get even more value. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL right now to check it out and use promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. This show is also brought to you by street side brewery and Happy anniversary to Streetside. Seventh anniversary. They are celebrating, and this weekend is the perfect time to go there. On Saturday, they're going to have 11 brand new beers on tap starting at 10 a.m. It is a huge college football weekend. Pretty sure, and I'm no meteorologist, but the weather is supposed to be great. Bengals obviously play on Monday night. Maybe you want to roll through for a little happy hour action from 4 to 6. You can get to Streetside and try all of their brews right there and they're obviously going to have a tailgate because they have a tailgate before every home game drink and food specials games and prizes all really close to downtown cincinnati 4003 eastern avenue in columbia tusculum near lunkin airport i've been there i love it i'm hoping to sneak down there this weekend for their anniversary check them out and enjoy from All of their new beers to their award-winning fruited sours and New England IPAs. It's not the west side or the east side. The best side is street side. Quick update on the backup quarterback competition, and then we can talk a little bit about, you know, some of the things that you might expect to see if Joe Burrow can't play, assuming even if he does play, he won't be 100%. And we won't get too far into it. We'll have time for a full game preview on Sunday. But Zach Taylor asked about Will Greer. And the obvious answer is he's been there for two and a half weeks. He joined the team after the preseason. He missed all of install. And it takes time to catch up when you miss install. Zach Taylor describing it as time on task. They're in the game planning part of practice at this point they're they're not installing nearly as much i'm sure there's little bits here and there where they're putting some stuff in every week but for the most part the offense is in and so will greer catching up on all that time he missed sounds like he's making good progress he's been working really hard obviously and we we weren't terribly inspired by what we saw from jake browning and training camp this year so i think that's probably leading to and the fact that he's been on the practice squad for his nfl career hasn't played in, in a regular season game that mattered at any point had had one snap i think or one pass in in week one um mm-hmm. i'm excited to see a competition there doesn't sound like realistically it's time for that competition to really have a chance yet for will greer and, and it's jake browning's job certainly for this week oh one thousand percent if 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 Joe obviously can't go to those that are rooting for that are kind of rooting against Jake because the only way will gets on the field is if Jake is just really bad and and that's that's pretty much it you're right he just hasn't been here long he missed the install I think they're impressed with him I think they think he's intelligent and can be a playmaker and they like him it's just so late in the game and it's really tough and, and so could it happen at some point it could but hopefully Jake Browning just goes out there and balls out if he has to play and then Joe's back. And that's, that's just yeah. the perfect world. That's perfect it. idea. Like that's, that, that's what you, and by balls out, I just mean is able to run the offense that they're hoping to run adequately. I'm not expecting 450 yards and five touchdowns just to be clear, but I, I think he did show some flashes and was much better in, in preseason games than practice for the most part. Mm-hmm. And there were times when you saw like, like green Bay, he was 10 of 13. And then it just kind of melted down at the end. Uh, the, the, the second preseason game, you have the interception, but then he rebounded and, and played well on that final drive against Atlanta. Played well the entire game against Washington. Like, in the entire game for him was two drives. But there's there's something to be said about that for Jake. So hopefully he can go out there if he needs to 
and get them to 20 points on offense. Like if you do that, that's probably about all, all you can ask. And then you need this defense to obviously play well against the Rams offense. That's playing pretty well. That's something that I talked about in the crossover. Can, can the Bengals defense step up this week and make it a bit of a defensive struggle? And, and, on the same side, the Rams, I know, are concerned about their ability to stop the run. So if you have Jake Browning or a more limited than we've seen Joe Burrow at quarterback, if you're the Bengals, you're going to do things differently on offense. I think either way this week, they're going in there with a different game plan than what they normally have for Joe Burrow, where they, they leverage Joe Burrow's various skills to, to kind of shape the offense around his strengths, get guys into routes, let him figure out where the ball needs to go. Have you know two two half field reads and let him figure out which half of the field he needs to read based on what coverage he gets and and things that have really been excellent for this offense over the last two years. At least once they found their footing, as they've had for the third straight year a, a slower start than intended. And each of these years, there, there's some sort of excuse, but it does of course wear a little bit thin. But Either way this week, I think you, you see something a little bit different. You, you can't fall behind in this game. You can't get behind in the game script and, and make yourself one-dimensional if Jake Browning is your quarterback or limited Joe Burrow is your quarterback. I think that's not a place they want to live. That's where they've been living this entire season. To my knowledge, they haven't had a lead this season, unless I'm forgetting something no, embarrassing. Right. Um, right. They ideally can play from a neutral or better game script in this game. It's a big ask against Matt Stafford and that Rams offense has been playing really well with a bunch of guys that we didn't expect to be playing really well this year against a couple of teams that I think are pretty, pretty good. Most notably the San Francisco 49ers. So they gave a real game to for three quarters in week two, but I think that's important. Getting yourself into a position where they can't pin their ears back and, and chase down whoever's playing quarterback with reckless abandon, respect the run, and, and do things a little bit differently with your offensive game plan this week. Yeah, I, you have to. It, it has to be different. And our guy Mike Santagata wrote about it, Bengal Sands, for all Bengals. Like, get points early. Get points in that, that, that scripted drive or two. Because if you can do that, especially with whoever's playing quarterback, it's going to take some pressure off. The last thing you want to do is have to play catch up, which guess what Sean McVay and the Rams are saying? Let's make them play catch up. Let's get out to a lead. Let's let 99 do his thing. And so that's the that's one of the many things that that we'll be keeping an eye on. And obviously when we do our game preview that, that we're going to mention, I, I think this is really interesting because to me, it's it's pretty much a kitchen sink type of situation. Oh and three. That's that's what you're staring at. So can you figure it out? And I get it. By kitchen sink, I don't mean make the franchise go out there if he's not ready. But I mean find a way to get a W, regardless of who's under center. And that's really, really hard to do in the NFL. It is, no doubt about it. So we'll see if uh, if they can do it. I think the good thing, Jake, and I get people are down on him, Jake Browning took more – let me make sure. But Jake Browning took more first-team reps than any other backup in training camp. I actually think that's probably true than any other backup across the league, backup quarterback in camp. I don't think there's another one that did. And and probably. so so that part of it, especially this early in the season, working with Jamar, working with the you just hope that it pays off, that it translates, and that it's enough uh, until Joe can get back if he doesn't get back for in time for Monday. Yeah, that is the question we will be looking to answer over the next couple of days as we – gear up for this Monday night football game. And honestly, we might not know until Monday night. It, it might go down to the wire. They're probably going to continue to play this very close to the vest unless some miraculous healing occurs and suddenly everything is just fine, which has about a 0% chance of happening. So we'll, we'll see how the next couple of days go. We'll be back with a game preview Sometimes Sunday, Sunday afternoon, you'll have 24 hours at least before the game to check out the game preview when we get that out. And then we'll have you covered after Monday Night Football as well here on the Lockdown Bengals podcast. So until next time, thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Hootay and have a good one.